Hi, good day everyone. You are welcome to chemistry class today. In today's class, we shall be looking at the topic acid-base titration. Acid-base titration is an aspect of analytical chemistry. Of course, we have two branches of analytical chemistry. The first being the quantitative analysis why the second is qualitative analysis. The quantitative analysis has to do with the determination of the amount of substance that is used in a chemical reaction. In determining the amount of substance used in chemical reaction, you might either be referring to the mass of substance used or the volume of one reagent used in a chemical reaction. The techniques used for determining the volume of substance or the volume of reagent used is known as volumetric analysis. And in volumetric analysis, a particular technique that is employed there is titration. So today's class, we shall be looking at acid-base titration, which is quantitative chemistry. And here are the learning objectives for today's class. At the end of this lesson, it is expected that all students should be able to define acid-base titration. Should be able to describe the procedures used in acid-base titration. Also, should be able to define terms associated with acid-base titration and lastly it is expected that our students should be able to determine the concentration of acid or base from given parameters acid-base titration is used to determine the concentration of an acid or of a base yes in quantitative chemistry we want to determine the amount of substance that is involved in chemical reaction and that is why we use the titration so the titration is a technique that is used in determining the concentration of an acid or that of a base in acid-based titration, there is progressive addition of one reactant from the burette. That's most cases, that's the acid. To a known volume of the other reactant in a conical flux, or which is also called elemental flux, often the base that is in most cases the acid is usually in the burette as we can see in this diagram the long tube with tap at the bottom then the base is usually in the conical flux so the acid is being added progressively to the base in the conical flux and in there there is indicator that will help to signal the end of the reaction. That is when the number of mole of the acid and the base are equal according to the balanced chemical equation of the reaction. Now, hydrogen ion and hydroxyl ion are the major products of acid base titration that is to say the major product of neutralization reaction the hydrogen ion combines with the hydroxyl ion the hydrogen ion is coming from the acid while the hydroxyl ion OH minus is coming from the base and that is why it is essential for us to define uh, ionous acid and ionous base an ionous acid is, is a species that dissolves in water to produce hydrogen ions or protons. 
I'll repeat it again. Ahenius acid is a species that dissociates in water to produce hydrogen ions or protons. That's why an ionous base is a species that dissociates in water to produce hydroxyl ion. An ionous acid reacts with ionous base to produce salt and water. That is in the neutralization reaction. I want us to examine the chemical equation below in order to understand the concepts of acid base titration. Okay, as we can see, we have the general word equation where you have the ionous acid reacting with the ionous base. Of course, the product of the reaction is salt and water. Now, here is the general chemical equation. The acid, the hydrogen ion is from the acid, that is H, and you have MOH, where you have the OH coming from the base. And the net reaction is the salt MX plus HOH. Eventually, you have salt MX and water. And we have the net ionic equation. So that is to say that the major result here is what so in a neutralization reaction the pH of the base and that of the acid change progressively as the acid is being run into the base progressively to get a neutral pH of 7 now we're going to look at some of the terms using acid base titration we have the equivalence point. This is an essential term that is used in acid-base titration. The equivalence point of a neutralization reaction is the point at which the moles of hydrogen ion is equal to the moles of hydroxyl ion according to the balance equation of the reaction. Okay, I'll repeat this again that the equivalence point of a neutralization reaction is the point at which the moles of hydrogen ion is equal to the moles of hydroxyl ion according to the balanced chemical equation of the reaction. We can always call it end point. So, if I don't want to say equivalence point, I can also refer to it as end point both depict the same meaning so the end point is the point where you see a significant change in color so and that is why it is essential we use indicator of course an indicator are uh, organic acid that changes the color of a solution depending on the ph of the solution now, we have talked about indicator. An indicator is used to indicate the equivalence point during a titration by changing color. The titration experiment is usually conducted several times carefully, and the volume of the solution used from the burette are recorded. Of course, there could be many trials. The first trial could be a rough trial, and after the rough trial, the, the one carrying out the experiment should be able to take cognizance of the end point and such experiment can be carried out two more times in order to look for concordant values. What are concordant values? Concordant values are values that are not too far from each other. In most cases, we look at values whose differences are not more than plus or minus 0 0.2. I'll take it again. The concordant values are values whose differences are not more than plus or minus 0 0.2. Now, how do we now get the volume of acid use in the 
reaction. The volume of the solution or the acid use is then the average of all these titles. Of course, if the experiment has been done th three times, then the volume of the solution used will now be the average of all these titles. We don't just take all the titles. We are going to consider concordant title values. Concordant title values. That is to say that you look at, you look out for the values whose differences are not more than plus or minus 0 0.2. If it is only two of those values are concordant, then the average can be found using the two values. Okay? Terms used in acid-based titration. Continue. Now, in order to calculate the concentration of an acid depicted as CA, we need to know the following. Of course, we'll be looking at a standard solution. A standard solution of the base must be used. So we call the standard solution of the base CB. And the solution must be expressed in mole per dm cube. Of course, the standard solution is a solution whose concentration is known. So that is to say, in order to determine the concentration of acid, you need to use a standard solution of the base. Okay, And the standard solution of the base must be expressed in mole per dm cube. Of course, it is also important that we know the volume of the base used, which is Vb. And the volume is usually in cm cube. So there, 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 there are different sizes of the pipettes. Of course, there are 20 cm cube and we also have the 25 cm cube. So depending on what you're using, so it is essential you note the volume of the pipettes and that will be the volume of the base used. And it is usually present in cm cube. Then it is also important that the volume of the acid VA used to neutralize the base is usually in cm cube. It is your title value, that is VA. This must also be expressed in cm cube. And if you have to calculate the concentration of the base, so the same, the same parameters that I've just mentioned are also needed. That is, you need a standard solution of the acid in this case, in the standard solution of the acid, and it must be expressed in mole per dm cube. You also need the volume of the base, okay? Then you also need the volume of the acid in order to neutralize the base in cm cube. Now, we're going to look at the tips for calculating the equivalence point of an acid base titration. And if you are able to follow the tips, I can assure you that you will be able to calculate the concentration of a solution in acid-based titration. Of course, we know that one of the major reasons why we carry out titration is to determine the concentration of a reactant. And this reactant may be either an acid or a base. So you can follow these seven steps in order to calculate the concentration of an acid or base at the equivalence point of an acid base titration. The first thing you need to do is to write the balanced chemical equation for the reaction. That's the first thing. You need to ask yourself, okay, the reaction is between which acid and which base. So you need to write the balanced chemical equation for the reaction. Extract all relevant data from the question. You need to ask yourself what and what parameters am I given? Okay, what is the concentration of the acid? What is the volume of the pipette? Uh, the volume of the base, that's the size of the pipette. Oh, what is the volume of the acid use? What is the number of mole of acid? according to the balanced chemical equation and what is the number of mole of the base according to the balanced chemical equation. Number three, you need to check that 
all that data are consistent so that is check data for consistency okay for example concentrations are usually given in mole per dm cube don't take concentration as uh, as a unit of mole per cm cube no it must be in mole per dm cube but volumes are often given in cm cube so if you have to use your volume in calculation you can always convert to dm cube but if you have to leave it in cm cube then it means you need to also leave that of the acid in cm cube when you are working with that of the base you will need to convert cm cube to dm cube as i have said for consistency the easiest way to do this is to multiply the volume in cm cube by 10 raised to power minus 3 which is the same as dividing the volume in cm cube by 1000 okay number five you need to calculate the moles of reactants which is n for which you have both the volume and concentration in mole and this is given as moles of reactant which is concentration times volume so that is to say we have number of mole n which is concentration c times volume then number six you need to use balanced chemical equation to determine the stoichiometry mole ratio of the acid to the base so this is usually n a ratio n b so you can get that from the balanced chemical equation of the reaction then you need to use stoichiometric ratio to calculate the mole of the unknown reactant of course the mole is n equals to c b that's concentration times volume so from the volume of unknown reactants and its previously calculated moles, then you can calculate its concentration in mole per dm cube. So this, this can be number of moles all over volume. So of course, concentration is like solubility. It's like you determining the amount of solute that dissolve in the solvent to make up the solution. So concentration is number of moles divided by the volume and this is usually expressed in mole per dm cube okay calculation at the equivalence point of an acid based titration at equivalence point the number of moles of the acid and base are equal to that of the balance equation of reaction this is very essential i need you to know that at end point at end point, the number of moles of the acid and that of the base are equal to that of the balance equation of the reaction. So that is to say that if the titration is between acid and a base, and a base, then it implies that it implies that if one mole of the acid has reacted with one mole of the base. So it means that at equivalent point, Na is equal to Nb. So we can have Na for the acid, which is Ca multiplied by Va. Then we can also have Nb for the base, which is equivalent to Cb multiplied by Vb. So at end point, Na ratio Nb is equivalent to CaVa all over C B V B. So this is an important formula that you need to take note of. It is very important you know how to make use of this formula. Okay, we're going to take an example. If you look at this example, in this example we want to determine the concentration of sodium hydroxide. Don't forget, we have said that one of the reasons why we carry out acid-based titration is to determine the concentration of either the acid or the base and here here is the question you have 25 cm cube of aqueous sodium hydroxide solution of unknown concentration so it means this solution is not standard was placed in the conical flux 
the burette was filled to the 50 cm cube mark, which is 0 0.10 mole per dm cube aqueous hydrochloric acid solution. The sodium hydroxide solution was neutralized when 20 cm cube of hydrochloric acid had been added. Determine the concentration of the sodium hydroxide solution. Now we can take a few of the parameters given. Here we have a um, 25 cm cube of sodium hydroxide. That's the size of the pipette. That's the volume of the base. We are also given um, concentration of the acid. It means that the acid is a standard solution because the concentration is given. So we know the concentration to be 0 0.1 mole per dm cube. Then we are told that the sodium hydroxide solution was neutralized when 20 cm cube of the hydrochloric acid. So we have volume of the acid to be to be 20.0 cm cube. Here we want to determine the concentration of the sodium hydroxide. So in this question, we have all parameters needed. We have all the parameters needed. So we want to determine the concentration of sodium hydroxide and here are the steps now if you look at it now the first thing don't forget the first thing to do is to write the balance chemical equation for the reaction so you have the word equation as we can see so the equation is balance hydrochloric acid reacting with sodium hydroxide to give us sodium chloride and water now you have to extract relevant data from the question because we have the volume we have the concentration we also have the volume of sodium hydroxide that's the size of the people we also have the we have the concentration of the sodium hydroxide which is unknown which is unknown and that is what we want to determine you need to check data for consistency okay then after that you can calculate the moles of xcl which is CA times VA. Now, if you look at here, we have converted the volume of the acid to dm cube by dividing it by 1,000. And that's why we have 20 times 10 raised to the power minus 3. So eventually, we have the number of mole of the acid to be 2 times 10 raised to power minus 3, which is approximately which is equals to 0.002 mole per dm cube then the next thing is to determine the na and nb from the balance to geometry of the reaction so as we can see from this reaction na and nb equals to one so we have one ratio one then we need to find the moles of sodium hydroxide so in order to find the moles of sodium hydroxide, since we know that the moles of the hydrochloric acid is 1, then automatically that of the sodium hydroxide will also be 1 because we have ratio 1 to 1. So we have the moles of sodium hydroxide to also be equal to that of the hydrochloric acid at equivalence point. Then lastly, we need to calculate the concentration of the sodium hydroxide. Since we know the number of mole of the sodium hydroxide, so the concentration will now be the number of mole all over the volume. So as we do that, we have the number of mole divided by the volume. Don't forget here we have also converted the volume of the base to dm cube by dividing by 10 raised to power minus sorry by dividing by 1000 or multiplying by 10 raised to the power minus 3 and eventually the concentration of the base is 0 0.080 mole per dm cube and that gives us the concentration of sodium hydroxide so the solution has been standardized Now we need to look at another example. This is also similar to the first example. We could see here that this experiment has been performed three times in such a way that we have 
three title values. Now we are going to ask ourselves if these title values are concordant. We're going to ask ourselves if these title values are concordant. Okay. Now we have 50 cm cube of 0 0.2 mole of sodium hydroxide that was placed in the conical flask. The bread was filled with sulfuric acid of unknown concentration. After determining the volume of acid required to neutralize the sodium hydroxide was about 22 cm cube. The experiment was repeated three times and the following results obtained. Of course, here in this question we can deduce some of the parameters given. We have 50 cm cube of sodium hydroxide. So that means the volume or the size of the pipe it here is 50 cm cube and the base is a standard solution because the concentration is known which is 0 0.2 mole per dm cube. Now we have um, after determining that the volume of acid required to neutralize the sodium hydroxide was about 22 cm cube. The following experiment were repeated of course. So we we need to find out the title value okay and we need to ask ourselves if these three values title values are concordant as you can see in this reaction where um, in this table we have uh, the units of the volume being labeled as milliliter that's ml which is equivalent to centimeter cube that's cm cube now 20.2 19.8, 20.0 are the values of T. So in order to get the title values, we need to find the average of these three values. Of course, the first one, 20.2 and 19, 19.8 appears to be far away from each other. So in a, in a more, in order to be sure, you can only use 19.8 and 20.0 because these two are concordant values. You can as well use 20.2 and 20.0 or you can use 19.8 and 20. Okay. Okay, so let's take the steps. You write the balanced chemical equation. As you can see, the reaction is between sulfuric acid, sodium hydroxide. Then the result is sodium sulfate in water. So we, are, we can see that number of mole of acid here is 1 and that of the base is 2. So Na to Nb is ratio 1 to 2. So you extract relevant info. So we are, here we have the relevant info. You have the volume of the base to be 50. Concentration of the base to be 0 0.2. We have the concentration of the acid which is unknown. Of course. The volume of the H2SO4 is the average of all volumes from all experiments that were done carefully, and the difference is not more than 0 0.2. So here we have the title value as calculated here as 20 cm cube. Okay. Don't forget I said that you need to use concordant values, but I have used 20.2. But I've used the three values here because the differences are not that much, okay? Of course, in a strict way, you can just restrict yourself to values that the differences are not more than plus or minus 0 0.2. Then you need to check the data for consistency. And if you have done that, you could see that um, the number of mole of the base is cbvb so we convert the volume to dm cube so we get the number of mole of the base to be 0 0.10 mole then the, from the balance chemical equation we can find the stoichiometry mole ratio which is ratio one to two of course you can get this from the balance chemical equation so having done that we could see that H2SO4 NO is ratio 1 to 2. So an H2SO4 NaOH is half 1. So one mole of the sodium hydroxide 
neutralizes half mole of the H2O sulfur, and that's the that's the implication. Therefore, 0, 0.0 moles of the moles of sodium hydroxide will neutralize half moles of H2O sulfur, and that's how we get the number of mole of the acid. Okay, which is five times ten raised to power minus three mole. So uh, having done that, we can calculate the concentration of the acid, which is the number of mole of the acid divided by the volume of the acid. Of course, the number of mole will now be the volume, and the, the concentration will now be number of mole divided by the volume. And if you do that, you get 0 0.25 mole per dm cube as the concentration of the acid. So I want to believe that this is well explained to you. You can go over the slides again in order to get a better understanding of how to determine the concentration of a solution. Any question? Please, if you have any question, you can send your questions to samshow at live.co.uk or you send it to this whatsapp number 0706638 thank you and here this is a question for you you can try this of course you can submit it uh, via the whatsapp so that this can be marked and sent to you back immediately 25 cm cube of barium hydroxide of unknown concentration was placed in the conical flux. The burette was filled with 0.062 mole per dm cube nitric acid as HNO3. A titration was performed quickly to determine that about, C, about cm cube of nitric acid was required. Okay, here the actual volume was not given, so you can determine it yourself. Okay, to neutralize barium hydroxide, three more titration was were performed very carefully to determine the volume of nitric acid required. The result of these experiments are shown, are shown below. So the, you can see the table. You have the initial volume of the acid, and you also have the final volume of the acid. I need you to think on how to get the volume of nitric acid used and how do you get the volume of nitric acid used you need to subtract the initial volume so the final volume from the initial volume then you get the volume of nitric acid used for experiment experiment one experiment two and experiment three then you can now calculate calculates the given param parameter of course you need to know what parameter you are calculating here yeah okay so this submission should be hung up before 4 p.m on wednesday 24 june 2020 don't forget in this question you want to calculate the concentration of the barium hydroxide because the acid is a standard solution and that brings us to the end of today's class thank you for listening good day